Good evening to you all viewers and welcome to Short Scholarship Tips YouTube channel. If you are yet to subscribe to our channel, please do that now by hitting the subscribe button and turning on your notification. Today, I want to take you guys through the step-by-step -step processes involved in filling your application form online on Swedish Institute Scholarship website and possibly how to attempt some of the questions you will come across. Um, as we all may be aware, the portal opened today, the 18th of February 2021, and we run through February 18th, 2021. Most of us are ready, while some are still battling with their documents. It is expected. It is important to know that you are about to define the future years within these 10 days. I mean, the future years of your life within these particular 10 days of application period and it will be nice if you make good use of this opportunity given to you. I, I want to make you a promise. I promise you that um, it really was all your sleepless nights and efforts so far. The scholarship really was it. So don't be tired at this point in time. You have gone so far to quit. As we may have known, the website for this application is www.si.se. And you cannot apply for this scholarship if you did not apply for admission during the admission application window between 16 October 2020 and 15 January 2021. So I want to believe that you watching this video now has already applied for admission prior and is now ready for this adventure. Now, the steps on how to fill the online for, uh, form. <clears throat> so I would like to share my screen at this uh, point so that um, Please wait a minute so that I open my browser. Okay, there we go. So this is my browser. Of course, we know how to open websites. So that's not my concern. So when you open your browser, you type the website www.si.se. Okay, this is the website. So you go to announcements 
and then you select scholarships. So you move over here is for South Africans. So if you are from South Africa, you click here. But if you are from the 42 other countries like Ghana, Nigeria, Bangladesh, Pakistan, and so on, then you have to click here. So you select this Global Professional Scholarship here. So you see there are many information for you to go through. So you can do that um, if you feel like, but I believe by now you would have uh, gone through them. So at this point, you click read more about eligibility criteria. So I think you would have uh, gone through this also because they have been there on the portal even before today. So you proceed to the bottom of the page. So here, you see here, apply here. So this is the first form you will notice. Level of studies you are applying for. Of course, you are applying for um, masters. So you have to select master here then country of citizenship. You know your country, so you have to um, click on this arrow here, this black arrow here, and then possibly searching for your country. So I want to maybe use my country, Nigeria. Good, so I select Nigeria here and then click submit. So once you do, it will tell you if you are eligible or not. So because uh, some countries are really not eligible for this. So if you should select a country that is not eligible, you can continue beyond this uh, point. So, but if your country is eligible, it will tell you um, you meet the basic requirements of SISGP. So the basic requirement is that one, you must be applying for a master's degree. Then two, you must um, be from uh, at least one of the countries qualified for this. So <clears throat> you now click continue to the full application form. Here, you are seeing this because um, I, I have already, um, you know, applied and won the scholarship. So if I should click login now, I will go into my own page. So, but if you have not done that before, maybe this is your first time of applying, what you need to click is new user. You can see new user here. So you click on new user to create your own profile. So, but for those of you that have applied previously, what you need to do is just to um, log into your already existing profile and then continue from there, making sure you change um, those things that didn't go well with you last year. So like your motivation letters, uh, you know, all those things. So, Let's assume I am a new user, so I click here. Now I have to select my username. So you see all these are compulsory for you to fill. You see a red star showing you, um, you need to fill all the fields. So username, password, confirm password, then your first name, last name, email, then confirm email. So when you fill this, you then click create user. And once you are done with that, you can then proceed with filling the forms. So, but um, possibly, let me see if um, I should create a new user or maybe I use my existing account. Okay, I think it will be better for me to create a new 
account at least for the sake of privacy because uh, a lot of things um, need to be made private. So I will not uh, use my own account. So I have to create a new one. <clears throat> so username. So I can decide to use um, maybe, um, what do I use? Just anything, anything at all. Um, okay, I say busy brain. I use busy brain, then password. I can use any password of my choice. So let me assume I use this. Then first name, um, now I want to assume that my first name is um, maybe, um, what do I, okay, let's say um, Yusuf, Yusuf. Yusuf, Yusuf, whatever, then last name should be maybe Abdullahi, Yusuf Abdullahi, and then my email, so maybe I use uh, mm, something like this. Mm. Mba, okay, no, I use something like busy brands computers at gmail.com. So I should repeat the same here. Busy brands computers at gmail.com. And then I click create user. So I can decide to save my password, so save. So you see, I have really created an account. So I now have home, my details, my applications, new application. So um, I have to click on new application. So you see here, this is where you can create an application for scholarships and subsidies. You see, all available scholarships are listed under new applications. So you only click here if you have already applied. But because I want to make a new application, I am assuming you haven't applied before and you wish to make a new application, just like you see, we just created um, a new uh, profile now for the purpose of this. So we haven't created any applications prior to now. So I have to click new application. So you see, it shows this <clears throat> last application date. So you see this seed funding corporation in the Baltic Sea region, no. This is not what I want to apply for. And this is not what you also want to apply for. Then see this too, SI Legal Latin, no. This is still not what we wish to apply for. And then this, SI Scholarships for Global Professionals. SI, okay, good. So this is really what we want to apply for. So I click on this link and then it brings me here. Um, I must tell you, don't be in a haste to apply. Make sure you take your time to go through all these instructions you get. Try to read them and understand them before you proceed. It will be very, very um, important that you do that. So after going through the instructions, which is the first step here, you see steps. The first is application instructions. You see it here. So this is it. 
So the next one will be applicant verification. So you can either click next here to go there or you just click on the link directly. So I can click on the link directly here. I can as well click next from here. And then it takes me there, applicant verification. So you see here, you try to read. I hereby confirm that I have, a, okay. Then you have to tick this and then click on next. It will take you to the next, which is applicant information. Okay, so here you have to write your first name again as stated in your international passport. Then your last name, which is the same thing as your family name. Then your city of residence. Of course, I don't need to explain all this to you. You know where you reside, the name of the city. It is peculiar to you. So you have to put the name here and then the country. You also put the country here. Then phone or mobile phone. So including country code, of course, you know um, what to do. So maybe every country has their own unique code. So if you are from Nigeria, your code is plus two, three, four. If you are from Ghana, plus two, three, three, and so on and so forth. So you start with your country code and then other numbers, then your email address, then sex as stated in your passport, are you male or female? So you have to select your gender. Then um, country of citizenship. Yeah, this is very important because sometimes um, you may be from a certain country, but will not be living there. So it is understandable if country of residence is different from country of citizenship. Yeah, it is possible. Um, you can be from maybe Pakistan and uh, uh, possibly living in um, maybe India or um, something like that, UAE, Ghana, Nigeria, is possible. So uh, uh, the value here mustn't be the same with the value here. So, but you must know something. If your country of residence here is Sweden, then automatically you will not be qualified for the scholarship because um, it is stated that if you are here for any other reason other than studies, maybe you came with um, a work permit or maybe any other type of permit that is not a student permit, then you are free to study for free without tuition fee. So that means if you're already living here in Sweden with any other type of permit that is not a student permit, you are not qualified to apply. Then if you are already living here with a study permit, you are also not qualified. So you see, it is very, very important. But I tell you, the value you put here mustn't be the same value from your, uh, uh, I mean, as your country of uh, citizenship. So that's just that. So are you a citizen of more than one country? So this is for those with uh, maybe dual citizenship. So if you have a dual citizenship, you put yes. So if you don't have, you just select no. But you know, if you choose yes, you will be asked to uh, maybe name the other country. Because also, as you might know, if you are a citizen of any European uh, Union, any country in the European Union or the European Economic Area, you are also not qualified because citizens of those countries also study for free here in Sweden. You don't pay tuition fees. So you are also not qualified if you are a citizen of any EU, EU or um, uh, European Economic Area, that is EEA countries. So you must also note this. Then your date of birth, you see the format here. So you have to write it starting from your year, followed by 
month and then the day. So that is maybe uh, 2020. Maybe you, your date of birth is um, something like um, 5th August um, 98, 1998. So you have to start with uh, 1998 slash, I mean, dash um, 08, which is for August, dash um, 05, which is the day. So after filling all this, then you have to proceed to the next one, application details. So, or just simply by clicking next here. So you also try to <clears throat> um, read this in detail to know what to do. So application details, important. You should submit only one scholarship application for all the master's programs that you applied for at universityadmissions.se, okay? So what they are trying to say here is, even though you uh, selected four courses during your uh, admission application, um, here you don't really need to uh, tender four different applications for each of the courses one application is enough to cover the four choices. So that is what they are trying to say here. So you have to read and understand. Okay, so here um, they said personal application number. So um, in your university admission, if you don't understand what this means, you can click help to understand. So you see the definition here. So when you applied on the um, university admissions website, you were given an application number that is unique to you alone. So no two applicants will have the same application number. So that's your application number you have to type it in here. So, but uh, if maybe um, you apply for admission to the any of the programs in Stockholm School of Economics, then you have to enter this 0000. You have to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you have to enter eight zeros if you applied in uh, Stockholm School of Economics. So, but otherwise then you have to um, input your university admissions application number here. So of course, I have to believe that you know how to um, get the number. So, <clears throat> feeling okay, so we continue. <clears throat> you feel all this prior to this master's program. Okay, as per your ranking, uh, filling the information about the master's program that is eligible for SI. Okay, so now you have to select all your courses, the courses you choose. So the first priority means your first ranking or your first choice. So you may choose to start with your first choice. So you click priority one. So here, <clears throat> you have to get the code for your um, courses. So maybe uh, I will advise you to maybe pick a piece of paper. At least that was what I did. It will be easier for you that way. So you pick a piece of paper, then um, list all your um, courses in the order which you chose them like one for your first choice, two for your second choice, and then three for third choice, and so on and so forth. Then you also, maybe besides each of them, you write their um, codes. So let me show you how to get this. I believe you know how to get it, but in case you don't know, let me just uh, quickly show you. <clears throat> Thank you. 
Okay, so you see this is the application number I am talking about in case you don't know how to um, get the application number. Okay, um, let's see. I will go to application, but I may not be able to show you with this because, okay, this actually um, is for my second semester here. So because we also used this to apply for second semester. So I don't know if I will be able to show you the code using the, okay, good, this is it. So you see when you click here, more information on the course. When you click more information, then down you will see application code. So this code here is for the particular course. So you have to write it down for all the four courses you selected. So when you now <clears throat> come here, you have to choose the particular code. So let me assume this is the code. So when you select this, it will automatically uh, put in the university and then the uh, subject area and the course you selected and even the number of credits. So you actually don't need to fill in this yourself. So you only need to input the right application code and all these will appear, including the uh, tuition fee per semester. So when you are done with that, so you see now um, it asks you, is this subject of the master's program you have applied for in Sweden within the same field as your bachelor's degree and or your work experience. So you see that sometimes um, it can be the same, sometimes it may be different. For example, maybe you studied um, something like um, computer science, but ended up as um, uh, maybe, uh, what will I say, ended up applying for um, entrepreneurial studies. Of course, you know, directly entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial studies is not directly related to um, um, computer science, but of course you can study it regardless of uh, your course. So you can say, no, but I wish to expand my field of knowledge. Okay. So um, maybe if you have worked as an entrepreneur before, you may say, um, yes, same field as my work experience. So you just uh, study it and then um, pick the answer that uh, is best correct for your own case or your own situation. So you see what subject area does this master's program belong to? Okay, industrial economies and management. So of course you check here, it should be management, that should be, um, I think administration. Management should be under administration if I am right. So, but you should, uh, okay, if you check here, let's check completely to see if there is any other one closely related. Transport social affairs, okay. So from what I'm seeing now, I think the only one closely related to it is uh, administration. So you select that, then you proceed. So the same, the second one, now your priority two. So you have to um, continue exactly the same way you did for here, then for all your courses of the courses you selected. So that uh, you know your priority two, three and four. So, or maybe to the, uh, if you selected the only two courses, you just uh, pick the two courses, you know. So then you proceed to next. So now your academic background. So you'll be asked about your academic background. So have you previously studied or pursued research in Sweden with any form of scholarship? You get, so yes, for a degree, yes, for no. So, but you know, 
um, I know most of you trying to apply your answers will always be a no. So you select no. So I am not sure how um, it will affect you if you select yes, but I think um, you may not be uh, you may not be qualified if you pick yes. So, but I don't know how it, uh, selecting yes will affect you, but I know in most of the people's situation, the answers will always be a no. So you select no and proceed to the next one. So you answer the questions based on your own situation. So in what field do you have or will obtain a bachelor's degree? So you pick as well from here. <clears throat> so, of course, I'm trying to check for engineers, maybe if you, if you are studying or maybe studied an engineering course, then um, possibly think it should be under STEM, yeah, STEM, exact sciences slash STEM, so it should be this. So um, think STEM simply means um, sciences, um, technology, engineering, and management. That's the full meaning of uh, STEM. So if you studied any engineering course, I think this should be the right uh, field to select. So, but after going through all this and um, there is no suitable um, field for your own situation, you can just uh, pick other here, okay? So how many master's degrees have you obtained? So that is if you already had a master's degree before, maybe one, two, but if you don't have any before, you can choose zero. Of course, um, I don't also know how um, having a previous master's degree will affect your application. I don't know, I can't tell you for sure whether it will affect it negatively or positively, I don't know. But just try to be as truthful as um, necessary, okay? So, <clears throat> highest level of education completed. So, of course, just the same. If you just maybe uh, hold a bachelor's degree, you select this. If you hold a master's degree, you select this uh, as the case, or PhD as the case may be, okay? So, year of graduation, you have to add the year of your graduation. So you see, it said year of graduation. So that means if you graduated 2016, you just type in 2016. So it didn't ask for the month, it didn't ask for the day, okay? The full name of your university. So here you enter your, the full name of your university. And then here you select the country where the university is situated. And then as usual, you click next. So previous experience. So here you see, this is a previous experience. So here you have to fill in your previous experience. Are you or have you been engaged in a network, voluntary work or any other civil society activities? You can choose up to three items if you have been involved in different ways. So just like I said, whatever is the case for your own situation, you have to select an answer that best describes your own situation from this drop down menu here. Okay, then you see, um, just like it said, you can choose three items. So maybe yes, I volunteered at a network society a uh, civil society organization, then here maybe, uh, yes, I am, or was a board member of a network, you know, you just select maybe uh, the cases that are through, uh, I mean, that are through for you, true for you, I mean to say. <clears throat> now, in total, for how many hours have you been engaged in a network? 
of course, by now you would have uh, calculated that maybe, um, if, especially if you used um, them for your um, uh, one of your uh, uh, re reference, if you used uh, civil society organization in one of your references, you, you should be able to maybe have calculated the total hours, and then you fill it in here. So, but if you we are not engaged or have not been engaged in any network or civil society organization before, you see here it says filling zero. So you add zero if you have not engaged in any of uh, such before. Then are you currently engaged in a network, voluntary work or any other civil society activities? So of course the answer should be yes or no. Now, if you are no more engaged, maybe we are engaged before, but not uh, currently, or maybe you are still engaged. If you are still engaged, you choose yes. If you are no more engaged, you choose no. So does your employment or engagement in a network relate to any of the UN Sustainable Development Goals? So you can say no, yes, I'm not sure or don't know. So of course, depending on your network, but I believe most uh, civil society um, networks are usually related to at least one of the uh, UN Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, maybe um, is that, uh, if it is a, a gender-based uh, network, it could be maybe uh, the sole aim of the network is uh, to promote gender equality, or maybe if it is um, 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 the medical um, related networks, then to promote uh, uh, good health and you know mental well-being of people. So you know, uh, uh, most at times, uh, most of these uh, 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 networks will have a goal that is. Um, directly related to at least one of the UN Sustainable Development Goals. So um, you have to find out which goals um, your, yours is related to. Then if there is, you select yes. So if you are not really sure, then you select I'm not sure. <clears throat> then which SDG is it? Please choose up to three most relevant goals if your engagement has been related to several goals. So just like I have said um, earlier on, so if it is uh, based on gender equality, equality, you just select it. So if it is a health-based uh, uh, network, then, you know, maybe you are a pharmacist or medical doctor, a nurse, you know, um, and belongs to um, a health-based uh, network, then you can choose goal number three good health and well-being, you know, something like that, then, and so on and so forth. If you are maybe um, part of um, a network uh, that is concerned about uh, renewable energy, then you can choose um, here. Um, where is it? I think I saw it somewhere. Oh, good, here, affordable and clean energy, okay? So just, you should be able to know which particular SDG it is related to and then pick the correct one. So what are you doing currently? So currently, what are you doing? Are you studying? Are you seeking employment? Employed freelancer entrepreneur. So if you are employed currently, you select this. If you're a freelancer or an entrepreneur, so you see this choice covers the three options, okay? So it doesn't matter whether you are employed, freelancer or self-employed. So then are you studying and employed at the same time? Then a freelancing, an entrepreneur, then you choose this. So caring for dependents, dependents full-time, then other. So of course, uh, most of us are employed. 
So you choose this, okay? And then you proceed. Does your current employment offer you the opportunity to take leave of absence for intended studies in Sweden? Yeah, of course, you know, um, as I will not uh, uh, negotiate on your behalf with your uh, current uh, place of work to allow you to move over here, but you must uh, be sure that uh, your company can allow you to leave for the purpose of the studies before you apply. So if your answer is yes, then you have to choose the particular answer that is true in your own situation. So you see, I am not employed at the moment. So if you, if this is the best answer, then yes, I will be, I will be able to take paid leave during my studies. Also, if this is your uh, own situation, yes, I will be able to take unpaid leave during my studies. Okay, also, if this is your own situation, no, but my employer has promised me a job at the same organization when I finish my studies. No, I will resign and find a job in another organization when I finish my studies. So you have to select um, the answer that best suits your own um, situation, okay? So, but you know, you have to, you have to be very careful when choosing um, your answer. Of course, you know, uh, if you choose no, I will resign and find a job in another organization when I finish my studies. In my own thinking, I think this is a dangerous um, um, answer to choose. Um, even this, these two, uh, to the best of my knowledge, should be um, dangerous and detrimental as a choice. So if I am to suggest, I will say you try as much as possible to avoid them. So instead of using that, um, you should better choose, yes, I will be able to take on paid leave during my studies. So whichever, but um, I'm afraid, I don't know how uh, picking any of this will affect you, but I'm really afraid of them, okay? Then you go to the next one by clicking next, work experience. So this here, do you have at least 3,000 hours of work experience? So of course, if you say no, that will be over for you because the minimum requirement is that you must meet these 3,000 hours. So, and I know you are applying because you already met these 3,000 hours. So that means you choose yes here. How many workplaces slash organizations do you wish to present here? Of course, the maximum is three and the minimum is one, okay? So you can uh, meet this minimum uh, 3,000 hours with only one work experience, just as I have made mentioned in our WhatsApp group when um, there was a confusion relating to this, okay? So if you have one particular job, uh, maybe that is, uh, up to 3,000 hours of work experience, you may decide to use only one. Then you can use two, but the maximum you can use is three, okay? So that means if you are using three, you select three. If you are using two, you select two. If you are using only one, you select one. In my own case, I used only one and still got the scholarship. So it doesn't matter if you are, maybe, maybe you tried to, um, uh, you know, up your application by choosing three. No, it doesn't matter. Someone submitting three can still get it. Someone with only one that uh, met the minimum 3,000 hours can also get it, so it doesn't matter, okay? <clears throat> then when I select one, it now says workplace one. In which sector does the organization you work or worked for operate? 
of course, mine is um, a private sector, so I choose private sector. But you know, for your own case, if you are working in public sector or academia, you can select this. If it is a civil society, you can also select this. What type of work experience did you have at this organization? Okay, it can be maybe a freelancer, you know, full-time employment, part-time employment, volunteer, intern. You know, um, some people asked if uh, internship qualifies as a, a work um, experience, you know, on our, our WhatsApp group. And of course, I told them, yes, it qualifies. You get so you if it is based on internship you can choose intern okay so but if it is a full time employment just go through and then pick um, what is correct in your own situation if you are self employed without any employee you can uh, pick this so if you are an entrepreneur or a business owner with one to five employees you can choose this. So more than five employees, you know, just go through it and choose your answer as the case may be. How many hours have you worked or did you work for this organization in total prior to 7 February 2021? Okay, so uh, that is before yesterday. How many hours? Of course, you would have uh, I, you, you, I, I expected you to have uh, calculated all these hours by now. So you have to input the hours. And you know, when filling this um, uh, form here, when answering all these questions, you have to make sure that the answers you are providing are the same with what you have in your forms, okay? So don't, um, maybe in your form, say one thing, I mean your templates, like in your uh, work experience uh, form or leadership form, CV and all that, you say one thing there and then come here and say another thing. It is simply a sign that um, you are not consistent with the information you are providing, which shows you are lying, sort of, okay? So you must make sure that whatever answers you are choosing from the beginning of filling this form tallies with uh, what you already have on your documents, okay? So just that. So if you are not sure, you have to look at your document here to be able to get the correct information as it is in your document and then put it in here, okay? Then in what field did you work at this organization? So you pick the field you've worked. Is it administration, HR auditing? You know, just as we've already said, you pick the field um, that is correct in your own situation. Do, do or did you hold responsibility for any of the following within this organization? Um, non-applicable supervising the work of others. So you just go through and also pick the ones that um, are true in your own situation. How many hours have you held slash did you hold this leadership position at this organization prior to 7 February 2021? So you also fill in the number of hours here. So which possibly you would have calculated before now. So if not, you just do the calculation. <clears throat> then after this, you proceed by clicking next. So here you see we are gradually coming to an end of our application. We are now here connection to Sweden. So connection to Sweden, do you have any previous connection to Sweden? So you can, your answer should be yes or no. Of course, uh, I also don't know how uh, your answer here will influence your uh, application, but uh, what I know for sure is that majority of your supplying um, have no connection to, um, uh, maybe previous connection to Sweden. So if that is your case, you select no. 
So if yes, within what setting? So maybe study related, work related, family related, holiday, others. So you just choose. But if your answer is no, then you have to choose non-applicable here because this rest term means you must select something, okay? So if, you are, if your answer is no, then your answer here should be non-applicable. Okay, you move. How, do you, how did you come across information about this? Is it uh, through studying Sweden.se website? If yes, you click here. Is it through si.se website? If, you, if yes, you click here. Is it through social media? If yes, you click here. Other internet channels, TV slash traditional media, my university student fair, and all that. So, but I know most of us, um, got to know about it via um, social media. So like in my own case, I happened to um, find, out about, uh, find out about this scholarship um, on a social media. So during my application, I still selected social media, so it doesn't matter. So if you know where uh, you got the information from, you have to select it. But if the options here, um, none of them met your answer, you can choose other here, okay? Then prior to August 2021, have you resided in Sweden for cumulatively two years or more? So of course you select your answer, yes or no. So if I don't also know how this will uh, influence your application. But I am afraid um, that maybe having um, a previous connection here may uh, undermine your application. I'm just saying what I feel, but I'm not sure how um, it will affect your application, okay? <clears throat> then you click next to move to the uh, next one. So here now, you are expected to, uh, you see here is documents from where did you receive one of your letters of reference? You know, you were told um, to get your letters of reference, one from work, and then the next one from um, either your previous university or a civil society organization that you are a part of. So you can choose here from where did you receive one of your letters of reference? So maybe full-time or part-time employment. So maybe I choose this. From where did you receive the other letter of reference? Then maybe like in my own case, um, civil society organization. So, but in your own case, it may be from um, maybe here, yeah, voluntary work or work at student organizations or the, I do not have any letter, okay? No, this is a bad choice, okay? If you choose this, that means um, uh, you are not qualified, okay? So if you look at this, you will see um, that there is no option for previous university, so you can choose other here, okay? Other, that's previous university. Do your letters of reference and proof of work and leadership experience certificate have the required stamps and signatures? Of course, if if it's if they don't have uh, stamps and signatures, you they won't be accepted. So the answers will possibly be a yes. Okay. So you see here why um, it is important for you. Uh, to get the second one from your civil society organization. So, because if you look at this here, you see, <clears throat> even though they said you can get it from a previous university, but there is no um, option for that here, okay? Um, I can see it, I can only see internship, voluntary work, work as student organizations. And uh, I believe work as student organizations uh, it's not the same as um, uh, university, I mean your previous university. So that means you choose other here. Good, so, and then you go. But in my own case, it was this. So <clears throat> you proceed, you click next. 
and then this is time for you to upload all those your documents you know in my uh, one of my uh, messages on whatsapp uh, where I, which i titled how to scan your documents so you see there we we had uh, four documents in total after everything even though your templates are more than four because your reference will be two then work experience form leadership form cv um, and so on and so forth they are more than four but by the time you finish scanning your documents they will be reduced to only four documents so which i have highlighted before now on our whatsapp group but maybe i can still mention them for the purpose of those not in the whatsapp group <clears throat> so you see um this one the first one is personal motivation letter which must be uh with the si form that is the te template you have a template for this so uh, you know the motivation letter has to be separate on its own. You don't scan it alongside with uh, any other document. So you have to click choose file and then search for the location where it is saved in your um, system, maybe um, your laptop or um, phone, whichever, but I prefer you do this using a computer. So you select it. <clears throat> from there and attach. So if you look at here, they said, please note, they can accept any of these formats, doc, doc, extension, extender, that is uh, from 2007, MS Word version upward, and then PDF. Even though this, um, I like, I don't think, well, even if they should accept a document file, I still uh, advise you to convert all your works to a PDF and then upload as a PDF. So the reason is that, um, you know, uh, sometimes um, depending on the version of Word, MS Word you used. So when opened in another version, it may scatter the arrangement or maybe because I know they will have a higher version that will likely be able to open it regardless of the version you used, but I still advise you to use a PDF, okay? <clears throat> then here, your curriculum vitae, okay? So it says, remember to also include a copy of your valid passport. So your CV will be uploaded alone, but as the last page in your CV will be your international passport, okay? So you have to include your international passport as the last page of your CV, okay? Um, of course, some people have asked what if um, their international passport is not ready and uh, they choose to um, maybe uh, use um, national ID card instead of international passport. Uh, well, I don't know. I don't know how this will uh, affect you, but if you look at the instruction here, you see um, the main mention of a valid passport. They didn't say or um, national ID. So uh, if you don't have an international passport and choose to go uh, for a national ID, um, I may not be in the right position to tell how this affects your application, okay? So the next one will be your letter of reference, okay? Now, you see for uh, South African applicants, um, letter of reference is not compulsory for them, okay? So it's not really compulsory for them, but if they want, they can uh, upload it. But for you, the SISGP, applicants it is compulsory you must upload them so just like i told you you have uh, two letters of reference so you have to scan the two together as one file okay 
So <clears throat> that means um, maybe if I am to advise you, your uh, the letter of reference from your workplace will be first. That's the first page. Then the second page will be the uh, uh, reference letter from maybe a civil society organization or from wherever you got one from, okay? So normally this letter of reference um, from my understanding, I think sometimes it can, um, you know, go into a second page. So that means the reference letter from your work will be two pages and then from that of a civil society organization, another two pages. So that simply means you have four pages in all scanned together as one single document file. So the first two pages, that means page one and two will be for your uh, uh, reference letter uh, coming from work experience. And then um, the third and fourth pages will be from the second wherever, maybe, maybe civil society organization or wherever you got them from, okay? Then after scanning that, you also upload them here, okay? Good. Then the last one is uh, the proof of work and leadership experience also not compulsory for South African applicants, but compulsory for all other applicants, okay? So just like I mentioned in the WhatsApp group, you have to scan starting from your proof of work. So the first page will be your proof of work. Then the second page will be your leadership experience. So you are expected to um, have done all this. And also remember that uh, for your letter of reference that will likely span through uh, two pages, you have to stamp and sign the two pages, okay? So that means the four pages will have appropriate stamp signatures and dates, okay? Don't just uh, possibly stamp and sign the last uh, page, leaving the other one like that, no it is not uh, acceptable. So I think after this, you are already done with your application. So you see here, key dates slash deadline. So if you click the next one, you see the key dates, um, deadlines and so on. So at this point, I will advise you not to be in a haste to click on submit because you may need to change something later. And once you submit, I don't think you can uh, change anything again. So um, instead of that, you, have, you see it here. I understand that I cannot make any changes. See it here. I understand that I cannot make any changes in my application once submitted. So because of this, instead of clicking submit, you should rather click on save. So but then you have to click on this, you tick this button and then click on save to save your application. So when you save it, just leave it like that. Then if there, uh, if there is anything you want to change later, you can just log in and then change that. But if uh, maybe um, the deadline should be on 18th, so maybe around 15th, 14th, 16th, and you discover that there is no need for you to change anything again, you can simply come and click on submit and that's all. You know, the scholarship is not offered to you based on when you submitted your application, that you submitted, that you, you were the first to submit, uh, doesn't guarantee you getting the scholarship. Of course, during my own time, I also did, I used this format I'm telling you. After filling everything, I didn't rush to submit, rather I saved my application and then had to submit about, uh, think, Two, uh, 
two to three days before the deadline. You know, I, I didn't wait till the deadline so as to avoid the uh, network glitches and maybe uh, stories that will touch the heart. So, but I still didn't rush to submit. And at the end, I still got it. So it doesn't matter if you were the first to submit or not, okay? So don't rush, okay? Because, uh, you know, if you do that, and then you happen to discover there is something you need to change, you can't change it anymore. So you have to just uh, uh, let it be that way. So you see here, <clears throat> you see the, uh, the key dates. On 9 April 2021, selection results for your application to universities are published on universityadmissions.se. So on this date, you will know if you have been admitted to any particular course or not. Then on 28th of April, that is uh, three weeks after this, because um, um, the list of successful applicants for SI usually come out three weeks after the release of uh, admission list because after the release of the admission list, they will have to uh, remove the names of those that didn't uh, uh, succeed in getting admission. So they will only proceed with those that uh, uh, actually got admitted. So it will take them uh, three ways to uh, process the applications further. And at the end of these three ways, which will be on 28th of April 2021, they will release the list of successful candidates. And then, you know, when you check and your name is there, you will be happy. And then the next thing is to start uh, packing your bags, start getting ready to be here by August 2021, okay? So you see after this, then uh, within, between this 28th to uh, 30th will be the official scholarship offer. So that's when they will send you the official offer letter, which will contain your scholarship offer and then um, the page where you will need to accept the scholarship in case you don't wish to continue you are free to decline the scholarship. So there is a page for that. So if you choose to accept, you just fill in the form and then say you accept. So there are instructions on how to do that. After filling it, you have to scan it and send to a particular email which they will, they will tell you. So when you do that, then um, you are done, okay? So just start packing your bags and uh, prepare to come over here, okay? And um, sending that official uh, um, offer letter will be between 28th and 30th, okay? Then um, uh, as, uh, the last date for you to either accept or decline your offer it will be 5th May. If at the end of this 5th May you didn't uh, maybe either accept or decline, they will take it that you have declined. And when this happened, then uh, you know there are people uh, that will be on reserve list. So they will have to pick the next most qualifying person from the reserve list to replace you if you declined. But if at the end no one declined, then those on reserve list will miss out and we have to uh, either continue the study on self-financing or wait till next year to apply again. So I think um, that is all I have for you today. Um, if you have any question after watching this video, feel free to ask. Until then, I wish you good luck. Um, I expect to see you here in Sweden come August. And then remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel if you are yet to do that. One love to you guys. Wishing you all good luck. Bye for now until 
we meet again.